Hey, how's it going guys? This is Anthony. Today we're gonna to set up a VPN server using OpenVPN and DigitalOcean. Super simple to do, takes five to 10 minutes tops. And the coolest part is if you're a new customer for DigitalOcean, it's gonna be free actually, because they're gonna give you $100 credit for the first 60 days. So I'll toss a link in the description so you can click that and uh, sign up and you'll get $100 immediately credited, credited to your account. And OpenVPN, while it does have a paid service, what we're going to be using it for is free. And the difference is, is hopefully, you're not gonna have more than two uh, people connecting to your VPN server at a time. If you do, then this isn't for you. So let's just get right to it. So first thing is, once you're able to uh, get your account set up in DigitalOcean, you're gonna get, come to a screen that's similar to this. And you'll have lots and lots of options. Uh, they have what's called droplets, and a droplet is a virtual private server and you can do hundreds and hundreds of things with, with these things. So in our case, we're gonna create the OpenVPN server and it's gonna allow us to connect through uh, our computer to the server, out to the internet, so that the internet will not know who we are. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to create a new droplet. So let's go ahead and create a droplet here. Now the droplet we're looking for is actually uh, OpenVPN. So luckily they have this place here called Marketplace. So if you click Marketplace and you go and you can see that um, I've created these before, but if you just look up in the search bar, OpenVPN, you'll see OpenVPN access server as an option. So you'll select that. You're gonna go and look at their different plans they've got here. They've got anywhere from $5 a month to $80 a month, but again, you set up your account and you're going to get the $100 credit for free. Um, so that'll make this free for at least two months. But you're not going to need $40 a month uh, for this probably. Um, if you're just looking to surf the net and things like that. So we're going to move over to the $5 a month plan. And we're going to say... Now choose a data center region. So um, this is interesting. We're actually going to pick uh, one from a different country just so we can see what it looks like once we actually connect. And, you know, it'll actually look like you're in that country when you start to surf the internet. So IP addresses are basically based generally on geographic region. So that IP address is going to tell whatever website you're visiting generally where it thinks you are and it'll start to swap out languages based on what you select. So it's pretty cool. Um, I guess for now we can say we're from Let's do Singapore. All right, so the uh, SSH keys, let's go ahead and create a new SSH key. So uh, what this is gonna allow you to do is it's gonna allow you to connect to your, your server without having to authenticate with a password. So this is where the public SSH key is going to go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use something called PuttyGen. And you can actually get this online. I will post a link in the description so you can go and download it. It's very simple to use. But basically what it looks like is this here. Once it's installed, it's a single window that'll pop up. It'll allow you to generate public and private keys. And it just says to, to generate some randomness by moving the mouse over the blank area. So we're moving it around. As we move it around, it's going to use the position of the mouse to determine uh, what the key value is gonna be. And it's always gonna be different because I can't exactly move the mouse each time. And then we'll, what we'll do is we'll save the private key. So we're gonna save the private key. We're not gonna use a passphrase for now, that's fine. And we'll just do, we'll save it as uh, key1.ppk. And now this public key here, what we're gonna do is copy that. So you wanna copy this public key and you're gonna paste it into here. And we're gonna name it. So I'm gonna call this uh, temp key because I'm not gonna need it after this and we'll say add SSH key. Cool. So now we've got this temp key here and that's what we're gonna use. So finally, we'll say finalize and create. How many would you like? I want one droplet. Any tags, not really worried about it. Any backups, not really worried about it. So we're gonna create the droplet here. So what this is doing is it's spinning up a, a server that's already gonna have OpenVPN installed on it. So all we'll have to do is just set up some basic settings and then that'll allow us to connect straight through and then that'll be it. 
Okay, now that we've created the OpenVPN server, we need to log in and do some basic settings. So let's go ahead and open PuTTY. And if you don't have PuTTY, you're gonna to wanna to download that as well. I will drop a link to that in the description. But PuTTY is an app that's gonna allow you to SSH into your server. So for us, we're gonna do, uh, the session is gonna be the IP address. So you'll wanna get the IP address of your new server that you just set up. And so that's gonna be here. So we're gonna copy that. And we are going to paste that into here. And if you go down to the uh, connection area, you'll see where it says SSH. You're going to expand that and then do off. Now here's where you're going to put your private key. This is important. Once you put your private key into PuTTY, it's going to allow you to uh, authenticate using that private key. So I think we called it key one. So we're going to say open and open. Okay, so once you get PuTTY up and running, what you're gonna do is you're gonna log in as root, and it's gonna authenticate with a public key. Once it's authenticated, the first thing it's gonna do is ask if you agree to the terms of service. So you're gonna say, yes, I agree. And then we'll just kind of walk through this. It says, will this be the primary access server node? Enter for yes. Uh, the default is one, so you're just gonna leave that at the default. The port number is fine. TCP port for OpenVPN, just leave that as yes, okay. Should the client traffic be routed by default? Yes, because that's the default. We want the traffic to go through so you can surf the net. Should the client DNS traffic be routed by default? Yes. Use local authentication? Yes. Should private subnets be accessible to clients by default? Do you wish to log into the admin UI as OpenVPN? So this is your username, OpenVPN. Please specify your activation key or leave it blank. So this is where you're gonna leave it blank. You don't really need it. So here's where it's setting up the profile. It's gonna get everything going. And once this is done, we should be almost there. Okay, now we're done. Now, if you read these notes here, it says that you can now continue to configure by direct, directing your web browser to this URL https colon slash slash your IP slash admin. So what we're going to do is log in with OpenVPN as this uh, username and the password used to authenticate to this Unix host. Now, did we actually use a password to authenticate? No, we didn't. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a password to the OpenVPN user. So we're going to say uh, passwd OpenVPN. All right, so let's create a password really quick. Uh, we'll do, all right, password updated, updated successfully. So now we can go to the admin UI and get this going. So let's try it. So we're gonna put that in there. Now remember, oh, your connection is not private. That's fine because we're using a self-assigned. So we're gonna proceed and now we're going to log in using the OpenVPN username and the password that we just set up. Okay, so now you're going to silently agree to all of the terms of service and we will wait. And this is what the dashboard looks like. It says two VPN connections allowed, which is fine. Enter your activation key if you'd like to have more than two. And really, all we need to worry about now is uh, just going to set up our client side. What we're gonna do is go to the front end so that you can get the client, which will allow you to actually connect to the server from your computer. So let's go back to the address bar and we'll take out the everything, uh, including the admin, just leave the IP and port. And once it gets to that page, you're gonna log in using the same credentials you did before. And once you log in, you're gonna get to the screen here. So it says OpenVPN Connect recommended for your device. New, okay, so we'll pick that. So once you click on that, it's going to download and you're going to install it into your system. Once you install the client, it's gonna look like this. You're automatically gonna have your profile loaded in there for you, which is cool. If not, you can always go through and add one and you just put in the IP address here. And then after you put in the IP address, you're gonna put in the port number and, and that's it. So it's pretty simple. But since we've already got it set up, we're going to uh, turn it on. We're going to connect. We'll enter the password we entered before. And OK. 
and now it says that we're connected. So that's, that's pretty much it. So let's just verify that this actually worked. So I'm gonna open up another browser here. And we'll do uh, incognito because that's gonna get rid of any cookies or anything that I may have saved in sites. So let's just go to YouTube actually, youtube.com. So this should give me kind of the default landing page for YouTube with no previous knowledge about who I am. So you can see that most of the stuff is not in English. And the reason why is because if I was to say, go to Google and say, what is my IP? My IP address is 188.166.229.197. Now that's not my home IP address. That's the IP address of the VPN server. So let's go back really quick and look. 188.166.229.197. So everywhere that I go on the internet thinks that the client or my computer is the server. And that's really how people are able to kind of obscure themselves from the internet. So hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I will do my best to answer them.